This is WCVB TV, Channel 5, Boston. Now, News Center 5 tonight. Your complete news update with Jack Harper, Krista Bradford, meteorologist Bill Hovey, and Mike Lynch on sports. Reporting live from New England's News Center, Jack Harper and Krista Bradford. Good evening. The first real efforts at nuclear arms control in more than a year begins in Geneva, Switzerland tomorrow. The world looks on and hopes. On the eve of those talks, both the U.S. and the Soviet Union are still far apart. Soviet Foreign Minister Andrei Gromyko and Secretary of State Schultz arrived in Geneva today. In an unusual move, Gromyko spoke to reporters in English. He made it clear outlawing President Reagan's Star Wars defense plan is at the top of his agenda. I have come to Geneva in order to discuss with the United States Secretary of State Mr. Schulz, questions related to the conduct of negotiations which would prevent an arms race in outer space. Earlier in the day, Schultz arrived with four of his top aides. He had other ideas for the focus of the upcoming talks. I look forward to discussing the important arms control issues with Mr. Gromyko, and I hope our meetings will set our countries on a path toward new negotiations and equitable and verifiable agreements. We have no illusions that progress will be easy to achieve. President Reagan is expected to hold a news conference Wednesday night to report on the results of the two-day talks. Tomorrow, Boston Mayor Ray Flynn delivers his first State of the City address. Tonight, the mayor put the finishing touches on the address. He's been working on the speech all day, reflecting on the past year, and planning his political strategy for 1985. A year ago Wednesday, Mayor Raymond Flynn was sworn into office. A new face, new blood injected into the city's political lifeline. Since then, he's become the working man's mayor, well known for his 20-hour days, not in smoke-filled back rooms, but out in the streets meeting with his constituents. And on the eve of his address, he feels confident his hard work has paid off. Boston experienced its most peaceful summer in, its, in over a decade in my experience, a real city that is coming together. And yet at the same time, we also had the highest amount of private investment money in the history of Boston, over $3 billion that was invested in Boston last year. Just recently, for example, in addition to that, I announced uh, 10 development projects, which would be an additional $1.3 billion, bringing in 25,000 permanent jobs and 12,000 construction jobs. So there's boom, there's growth, and at the same time, it's a city coming together. The city may be coming together, but his financial restructuring has not. Boston wound up its last fiscal year with a $30 million deficit, and some experts project the deficit could soar to 75 or even $100 million. I think the, the, the one that was most disappointing to me was going to the legislature, to the State House, and not being able to, to win uh, structural financial reform for the city of Boston. That's a critical issue. That's one of the major things that I'm going to be talking about in my State of the City address uh, on Monday. Mayor Flynn told me that improving city financing, continuing downtown development, and expanding the supply of affordable housing would be the three major points of his address. Then he shared his resolution for the new year. To try to spend a little bit more time with, uh, with my family. <laughs> uh, you notice I have my daughter with me here today, and she's been with me all day, but uh, the demands of the job make it difficult to spend as much time as I would like to with my family. That's one, and number two, on another personal spend more time reading. I love to read, but oftentimes I don't have the time to do it. From the looks of things tonight, he is making good on his promise with eight-year-old Marine playing ball in his office, gearing up for a possible career with the Celtics. Still, there are those friendly family reminders. Once in a while, just before you walked in the office, my wife called up and she says, come on, well, you're going to take me out for coffee and jelly donuts. So as soon as we finish this interview, I'm going out for coffee and jelly donuts. <laughs> Maybe next year the mayor can work on his diet. Channel 5 will be covering the State of the City Address live on Chronicle. It begins at 7.30 tomorrow night at Jamaica Plain High School. Jack. Yeah.
Still no major break in that investigation into Friday's murder of a Dorchester store owner. Herbert Krause was shot to death in his store Friday afternoon. What looked like a possible break in the case fizzled today with the questioning of a possible suspect. Police talked with a young Dorchester man who had suffered a recent leg injury. He was not charged, though. The youth was questioned because it was believed Herbert Krause had wounded one of his attackers by firing several shots as the thieves ran from his store. Services, by the way, were held for Herbert Krause today. A man charged with two gangland-style killings in South Boston in 1982 is being held tonight. James Flynn of Weymouth ends a two-year nationwide police search. 50-year-old James Flynn had been the target of a two-year search until his arrest last night in Bill Ricca. Flynn is charged with the murders of Edward Halloran and Michael Donahue as they sat in a car along Northern Avenue. The pair was gunned down in broad daylight. Police aren't certain what Flynn had been doing since the murders or how he avoided them for so long. As a result of information received uh, this past Wednesday, uh, Detective McManus and myself went to uh, the Bill Ricker Police Department and uh, a cooperation with the Bill Ricker Police Department and the FBI uh, culminated in the arrest of uh, James Flynn uh, last evening in, in a local eatery in Bill Ricker. Police and the FBI have connected the execution of Halloran with some alleged big-name gangland figures, including John Callahan of Winchester, who was murdered in Miami in 1982. Callahan had been a Boston business consultant who became president of World High Lie. He was connected with another gangland-style murder victim, Roger Wheeler, who had been chairman of Telex Corporation until he purchased the High Lie operation. The FBI believes the murders of Callahan, Wheeler, and Halloran were apparently connected. FBI and local police investigators may now have a major break in the case because of last night's arrest of James Flynn. Flynn will be arraigned in South Boston District Court Monday morning. Worcester fire officials are calling an early morning blaze at a downtown apartment building accidental. Fifty tenants, many of them elderly, are homeless tonight. News Center 5's Kathleen Delasky reports. There was a big party going on at this five-story apartment house when the fire broke at 2.30 a.m. That was a blessing. Many were awake and able to escape quickly. The three-alarm blaze eluded dozens of Worcester firefighters, but miraculously, all 50 residents survived with only minor injuries. I had the fire and alarms, and the kids were yelling that it was fire. I was about to get in bed. I didn't have a chance to get anything. The alarms were uh, ringing in the building, and the sprinkler system was going off. Actually, that's what saved us, because uh, if those things weren't there at that early hour, we would have lost some people, definitely. Apparently, the fire was ignited in this fourth floor unit when a blanket got too close to a portable heater. Two floors were nearly gutted, including Robert Ortiz's apartment. He retrieved a few possessions. His home is now his car. Most of the tenants of the downtown Worcester house are Hispanic. Maria Cruz is trying to learn English so she can get a job. Her apartment was only damaged by water, but she must leave. I know, I know, feel good, you know, because. I'm working three years for the make something for my king. He yeah, I feeling I do it like that. <laughs> the Armenian landlord, Eddie Kamujian, was too distraught to discuss plans to rebuild. Today is Armenian Christmas, and this is no present. Frustrates the landlord, frustrates the tenants. We started renovation about a month ago, but uh, painting, uh, we've uh, just, just got through painting the whole inside of the, in, the interior of the building. 42 of the fire victims were brought here to the friendly house shelter during the night. This morning, they were placed in hotels for two days. After that, they face another night.